When you think about virtual reality, you probably think about video games, but some therapists and psychologists have also been using it for therapy, for exposure therapy. Lisa uh, Edichico is the senior editor at CNET. She's here to talk about this trend. Uh, welcome to you. So first of all, talk about what exposure therapy is and how virtual reality can really help ease people's anxieties and help them overcome their phobias. Sure, so the whole idea behind exposure therapy is to really gradually introduce yourself to whatever your phobia is, whatever those stressors are. So if you're afraid of heights, if you're afraid of flying, things like that. And virtual reality can be really useful for exposure therapy because it allows you, it allows you to kind of experience those situations without actually having to go to them. So you're still in a safe environment. So if you're afraid of heights, for example, you can just put on a headset and kind of get the feeling that you're on top of a skyscraper or in the window seat of an airplane, for example. And you actually tried this out, so I'm curious to hear about your experience because for me, if, if there was a virtual reality option for my phobia, I would be scared to address the virtual reality option even. Yeah, absolutely. I think it really depends on what your phobia is and uh, what, what the program is like that you're in. So I kind of uh, did a demo of a few different scenarios. I did one at the top of a building, one in an airplane, one behind the wheel of a car, and you can kind of get um, the, uh, the sense of what it's like. And for some of them, like being behind the wheel of a car, I, I could see how it could be helpful, but you're not really driving. So if driving is something that makes you nervous in this particular situation i didn't have the ability to kind of switch lanes or anything like that but it still gets you acclimated to being behind the wheel and being in that scenario and for some people that alone is an important first step but i did find it to be really interesting for fear of heights because virtual reality is one of those technologies where you really can feel like you're somewhere else and vr does a good job of making it kind of tricking your body into feeling like you're on the top of a skyscraper or at the top of a building when you're really just sitting in your chair. So I, I could definitely see it being useful um, for that scenario in particular. Sounds, uh, sounds lovely. Uh, we only have less than a minute, but why isn't this more widely used in the therapy industry? The biggest reason is that a lot of people simply aren't using VR yet. It's not a part of everyday life. Most people probably associate it with gaming, as you mentioned. So if people don't have these headsets and aren't familiar with the technology, then therapists and psychologists aren't going to be as motivated to learn about it themselves and work it into their own practices. Okay, Lisa from CNET, thank you so much for joining us. Really interesting topic. Thank you. And you can find out more information uh, by going to CNET and going to kcalnews.com and clicking Scene on TV. Let's head